there are many who extol the virtues of grammar schools. They are usually people who either passed the 11 plus themselves or assume their children will pass. I've never heard anybody who went to secondary modern say that was brilliant and they are usually the poorest. Statistically, only 3% of the poorer families in Britain get into grammar. So why would you enforce segregation on the poor, poorest youngsters in our country at age 11? I think the first thing to say that the proposals that will be setting out actually fully in Parliament on Monday are around getting more good school places for more children and building capacity in our school system. And they're also about choice and diversity. As you say, parents do want to take different choices for the kind of school that they will send their children to. But in a sense, what we want to do is open up a debate about how we can really make sure that uh, grammars can play a full role and that selection can play a full role, but also how we can make sure that grammars are more open to children from lower income backgrounds and, and how if they can do that, then they should have the chance to expand. We've had so, you, you can imagine we've been inundated with uh, emails and tweets about this. Uh, I think a very pertinent one is Eileen Beer, who's tweeted this this morning, saying, please ask the Education Secretary about rising class sizes in comprehensives, budget cuts, staff redundancies. These issues need to be addressed, not the proposals about creating new grammar schools. Why aren't the government, why aren't you trying to sort out those issues rather than tra changing the education policy here? Well, I don't think this is an either-or question in the end. What we need to do is make sure we tackle issues of teacher recruitment and retention, make sure we learn from parts of the country like uh, where I am at the moment, London, where we've seen fantastic collaboration between schools that has helped lift standards across the board. So what we're talking about today is one of the measures that we can take importantly to make sure that there's more diversity, more choice critically for parents, but, but this also importantly and this, and, and, more and good the, school places what, for more children, that particularly you're in areas forward, where they don't have them. The proposals that you're going to put forward and the, and the, and the, and the, the investigation you're going, to go, you're going to put into working out whether this is a good idea is going to cost money. It's going to cost a huge amount of money to come up with these solutions if that's going to happen. Money that could be spent on some of the proposals that Eileen's talking about here, some of the issues that are happening right now in our schools, rather than the idea that you're going to segregate children at 11, depending on their background or depending on whether they have the ability to go into a grammar school. Why not put the money into something that needs to be done? There's no mandate for this either as well. Lots of people saying, why on earth are the government suddenly changing this policy? The schools are still trying to come to terms with some of the things that Michael Gove put in before Nicky Morgan was the Education Secretary, before yourself. Well, the issue is that over the last few years, we've seen 1.4 million more children in good or outstanding schools, which is great news, but there's still over a million children who are not in those good schools. And there are many children in our country who still live in communities where actually there are no good schools around them at all. And we have to ask ourselves the difficult questions and be prepared to open up the debate about what it's going to take to change that. And I don't think you can allow a political dogma to get in the way of having a discussion and an important debate how we can improve schools for pupils and improve opportunities. That's what we're looking at. And I think, actually, what I would say to people is, wait to see what our overall proposals are. But I don't think it's tenable to raise issues about concerns on grammars and then say, at the same time, we shouldn't even open a debate about how we can make grammars work much more effectively within our existing school system. Of but course what we're not. talking no, about is not just on be, grammars. Nobody would be against debate, of course not. But I think the point Ben made is, is that teachers, I know, are struggling to deal with the changes that Michael Gove brought in, Nicky Morgan saw through. Uh, we've had academies free schools, a new GCSE syllabus, a new A-level syllabus. We've had an enormous SATs, mm. massive SATs changes. Parents are confused because each education secretary says this is the answer. Children in the middle of it and teachers are exhausted. Why not spend the money that this review is going to cost on sorting out what you said was right last year? We need to continue with all of those reforms. We've seen that they've raised standards and, and, and we're no longer getting as many children coming out of our system without good GCSEs, particularly on maths and English. But at the same time, 
we know that as much as anything else, we need more school places. There's a, a demographic bulge coming through of pupils. We've seen that in primary. We're going to see that feed through into secondary. So we need more school places, but critically, they've got to be good school places. But we also need to this, tackle this issue of the fact that there are still parts of our country where parents don't have the choice of a good school near to them. And those children are missing out. And we should all ask ourselves the question, what is it going to take to change that? And what we're setting out are some of our proposals on how we think we can start to challenge that. We shouldn't accept okay. children growing up in parts of the country where they don't have access to a good no. school place. 17 million people have voted for leave. Yep. Based, I don't know how many people voted on the basis of that advert, but that was a huge part of the propaganda. You're now saying that's a mistake. We have a £10 billion a year, a £34 million a day feather bed that is going to be free money that we can spend on the NHS,